Welcome back everybody. I hope you had a great holiday break, Christmas break. Today we're back with some more tutorials, teaching you guys specifically some tricks within After Effects. You can also use Photoshop in this workflow to create cool things like this. You turn static images into these grand animated moving videos and visualizers here. You don't have to do this with just these biblical angelic images. You can use a lot of these techniques for any type of video you are creating, whether it's a music video or whatever. Here's another example of some cool techniques. This is the um, XXX Tentacion Look At Me music video directed by Gabio, uh, a video that's always stuck with me over the years because it blew me away the first time I saw it. Uh, but either way, just using the puppet tool, using Photoshop to kind of manipulate these different images and animate them using After Effects. That's why I believe that the Photoshop and After Effects workflow is really awesome. And if you can incorporate the two, you can really create some amazing things just out of straight raw images. So I'm gonna skip through here if you wanna check this out, there'll be a uh, full link below. Last thing I wanna show you is just using the CC Kaleidoscope effect within After Effects to kind of build on what we're gonna show you here. You wanna take more singular elements and make these uh, crazy portal visualizers like in this video. Again, you can just slap on CC Kaleidoscope within After Effects. But again, we're gonna talk about creating different visualizers using masking, adding 3D depth so you can put different elements between these layers and really have full control over an image and again, turn it into those animated visualizers. So before we do that, if you guys enjoy, slap a like, comment below anything you'd like to see next. If there's anything we talked about here that you wanna see as a part two, I do wanna say we do have a giant 25% off every single product on my website. If you are interested in picking up some video editing tools, that sale is gonna be going until the new year. So right now it is the 29th. You guys have until the first to pick up any of these products. Going into the new year, we're gonna be giving you guys a lot more tools, presets, scripts, extensions, plugins, anything that can really help you guys with your video editing workflow to save you time and give you some some new tools to work with. And without taking up too much more of your time, I just wanna say thank you guys for all of the support this year. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. It's gonna get more of the same in the new year, but even better, we're gonna be talking still about Blender, C4D, 3D, After Effects, all the other things I mentioned, Unreal Engine, anything that's happening right now in the scene, anything that's happening in culture, tech-wise, that we can teach you visually. I'm gonna do my best to get it onto my channel. So that's my whole spiel. Let's get into today's tutorial. I'm gonna pop open After Effects here and we're gonna create a new project. To get started, I just looked up a similar image so I can base it off of that Reddit post. Again, you guys can use any image you'd like, whether you're manipulating an already created image or you're just trying to work from scratch and revolve it around some theme for your video. This is a image from some cathedral. Just saved this image and I dropped it into my project bin within After Effects. So in After Effects, just drag that onto the new composition button here. So the very first step when creating these visualizers out of a static image, you want to be able to isolate different parts of this image so that we can animate them. So you guys can do the masking within After Effects if you just grab your masking tool and start clicking along here and trying to isolate these different parts. But I do recommend if you're working with something larger scale like this, where as you can see, there's so many different things going on here, I recommend you just do it within Photoshop. If you have the Creative Cloud subscription, which I do recommend so you can have all the Adobe products and work between them, you guys should have Photoshop all ready to go. So let's fire up Photoshop here. Once you've imported in whatever image you wanna work with, all you need to do is go to your left and grab your pen tool. Now it's a good idea you have some basic understanding of masking before going into this. You really just need to think about depth. It doesn't have to be so exact and perfect, but if you try and pay attention to the things that you're seeing in the first layer, the things that seem the closest to you, those are the ones that you want to isolate first. So just try and go by eye and choose the parts of the image that are closest to you. Make your little pen tool marks. Again, if you need any help with the pen tool, make sure you know how to click and bend to get a good cutout. That's extremely important, especially if you're doing this within After Effects. Once you've cut everything out, connect the last point to the very first point, and then you wanna right click and make a selection within Photoshop. Once you do have your selection, we don't actually want to cut away what's in our selection, because as you see, this is what we're left with. We want to cut away the inverse. So to do that, go up to select and select inverse. And then very important step, we're not gonna delete from this selection, we're gonna click Control J. What that's gonna do is it's gonna duplicate the parts that aren't in that selection into a new layer. That may sound complicated, but it's not that bad. Again, we're just inversing the selection and then we're clicking Control J. So now you see on the right, if I toggle on and off these layers, 
we have the original image with no adjustments, and then we have this duplicate layer that we just created of everything on the outside edge. And this is gonna be our very first ring, our very first layer. So again, when we go into After Effects, we can create a camera going through these layers, we can add depth, we can put different animated elements like smoke behind these layers. It gives us a lot of room to work with by isolating the different parts. If you wanna clean up these edges, what you can do is grab your eraser tool over on the left. In the top, you're gonna to have these little sliders to change the opacity for that eraser tool. If you lower down your opacity a bit, it'll be a bit more of a softer eraser. Before we move into the second ring, I'm actually just going to repeat those steps for this little guy falling in the foreground so that I can have him in his own layer. So again, just using my pen tool for things that are more exact, you can see how I'm zooming in to get that close up look. And then I'm gonna connect that. And once I have my selection, I'm gonna click Control J. No need to inverse this time. I just want to isolate that one specific character. So you see now if I toggle on and off the original image, you can see the layers which I have isolated. So to start masking out the next ring of people which are in this giant image, what I'm gonna do is select the first layer that I masked out and I'm gonna click Control J to duplicate it. On that duplicated layer, I'm actually going to right click on my paint bucket tool. I'm going to select the gradient tool. So now what you can do is control click on the little thumbnail for that duplicated layer. It's going to make a selection around that area. And then I can just use my gradient tool and just click and drag down to paste a little gradient over top of the surface area of the selection. So the entire purpose of this is just to have a reference up so that we know where not to mask out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just select my original layer that we've been masking from. Grab my pen tool and repeat those exact same steps. We're now I'm paying attention to the second layer of depth. So again, what seems closest to the camera with all the reference layer painted out. And you can see me just going through here and avoiding some of the ones that I feel like are behind these frontal characters and just getting a rough sketch of what that would look like. So again, once you've created that selection, you wanna right click and make a selection. And click OK. And then you want to click select an inverse and then click delete to get rid of all the parts that you don't need. If that seems confusing, let me just run through my layers quickly. At this point, you can delete your reference or just hide it. But whenever you click through your layers and hide different things, you should have those different parts of the scene isolated within their own layer. That's the ultimate goal here. So you can see we have the first outer part, we have the next inner part that we just created, and then we have the person falling, which we can animate in later. So now you guys have a good understanding of what we're doing to isolate those elements. We're just gonna repeat those steps for the next layer within this image, and then for everything in the background, then we're gonna take this project file into After Effects to animate. So one last run through of those steps in case you guys are confused. First, we're gonna create our reference. So I'm gonna select the layer that we just created and I'm gonna click Control J to duplicate it. And I'll rename that to reference. And I'm gonna Control click on the thumbnail so that the selection appears. Grab your gradient tool and just draw a line down so that we have that area all painted out and we know where to start masking for our next layer. So select your very bottom original layer grab your pen tool and repeat those steps. Start masking out around everything in the next layer of depth. Just like this. Right click and make your selection. Go up to the select tab and inverse the selection and then click delete so we can delete everything that's not within that selection. And again, make sure you did everything correctly by just doing a quick little rundown of your layers and making sure that everything is isolated the way you want it to be. So very simple, just knowing how to mask within Photoshop, knowing how to manipulate your selections so that you can select the parts that you want and then cutting those into their own layers. This is the exact setup we want. This is why I think it's better within Photoshop. It's a bit easier to understand. Again, it is very possible to do this within After Effects. You have the exact same tool set to make masks within After Effects and to add or subtract the masks within After Effects. So if you wanna do it all within AE, again, it's very possible. Just know how to mask and follow the exact same concepts I'm showing you. We've done everything within Photoshop. All we need to do is file, save this project file. I'm gonna name it something. 
and that's about it. We don't need to export it as a PNG or whatever. Just save this project file, and we're gonna drag the project file straight back into After Effects, and we should have all our layers ready to work with. All right, guys, so fire up After Effects, and here's where we can have some fun with animating the different parts of this scene that we've now isolated, with adding motion blur, adding cameras. So we're gonna go ahead and search for that project file that we saved within Photoshop, and just drag that straight into the project bin within After Effects. It's gonna ask you if you wanna merge it into footage or have editable layer styles. I just went ahead and merged it into footage. You're still gonna have all those Photoshop layers, but it just puts it in a pre-comp. So go ahead and select that and click OK. And then go ahead and drag that pre-composition that we now have into the timeline. And then you can double click on that pre-comp. And now you can see each of those Photoshop layers that we set up all ready to go with an After Effects. And if you need to, you can rename those layers so that you're not confused. I'm just gonna go through here and hide the different specific parts so you can see everything in this image is all isolated properly. So now we can go ahead and add all the bells and whistles to trick this thing out. So first off, we're gonna go and add some motion and we're gonna separate these layers within 3D space. To do that, you wanna click toggle switches and mode so that you can see those little switches next to your layers. And you wanna turn on the 3D layer switch for each. So check on the little 3D cube. Now we can transform these layers within 3D space instead of just 2D space. So to be able to transform around in 3D space, I'm gonna right click down in this gray area and I'm gonna to go to new and create a new camera. I'm gonna go ahead and just click OK. And with this camera, you can rotate, zoom, whatever. I'll leave a few beginner tutorials on After Effects cameras and what you can do with those in motion blur below if you're new to it. But it's pretty simple. All you have to do is click the C key on your keyboard to toggle through the different camera controls and we can use that later on to set up some keyframes. So when I talk about creating 3D depth within this composition, here's a little look at what I mean by that. So this is just the finished comp, which we're gonna eventually create, and I'm just grabbing a camera and just rotating the layers within 3D space just to give you a little show. So whenever you see this from the front view, this is what it looks like. Ultimately, whenever you play it, you can see our little guy falling. But what I've really done is just separated the layers ever so slightly in 3D space so that you have your first layer here, your next layer there. So again, there's a little bit of gap between each of these layers within 3D space. So if I really wanted to, I could grab these layers and move them in this Z distance like this to position them where I want to, to put different things between the layers, again, like that interactive smoke or whatever, and it just gives it more of a realistic depth illusion. You can even have the foreground person that we have here animating in the Z distance so that it travels past and through the layers. So again, it really gives you a lot of room to work with. So we have a little issue here where because there's nothing in the background, if we just start moving the position of the layers, you might have this ugly transparent cutout behind everything. So to fix that, what I did was just drag the original image with no cutouts as a layer below every single Photoshop layer. And I just added a blur onto that original layer. So we just fill in some of that empty space. So I searched for a Gaussian blur, cranked it up in our effect controls, and then turned back on our layers. Now, whenever we grab any of these individual layers and move them, it should again fill some of that space. So what I'm gonna do now to create that depth that I just showed you with all the layers pushed back in 3D space is just select each layer open up its little transform options and just go over to anchor point and grab the third set of numbers there. So each of these set of, so each of these set of numbers represents the axes for which it's transforming. The first is the X axis, the second is the Y axis, and the third is the Z axis. If you're not seeing that third axis, the Z axis, it's because you haven't changed your layer to a 3D layer. So again, make sure the 3D layer switch is on, grab that Z axis and then crank it back in Z space. If you want everything to have a similar looking gap, you can go by different number increments, like maybe change the Z to like 150, change the next one to 300, et cetera, et cetera. It's really up to you, or you can just play it by how you see it. If you, want, if you don't like changing it through the anchor points, or through the specific number values, you can even grab the blue axis on your screen and drag it back. If you're more of a visual type person, here's me just grabbing the blue one and moving it around. But again, what you wanna do is just add some depth between those layers. 
So now what I'm going to go in and do is add a bit of rotation. So you see in the original post on Reddit, there's a ton of rotation between each of those isolated layers. So let's go ahead and do that as well. I'm going to select each of these layers and go back to the transform options and we're going to set some keyframes. So to get it to rotate, we're going to use the Z rotation. As you can see here, you want to start at the beginning of the animation. So right at zero and you want to click the stopwatch to set a keyframe. Next, you want to drag all the way to the end of your animation and you want to go ahead and start adding a bit of this rotation and clicking to add a keyframe. Once you play it back, you can see the exact speed and this is going to vary based on how long your animation is. Play around with this value until you get a good speed that you ultimately like. And remember, dragging that keyframe in closer is going to make the animation faster. Dragging the keyframe out further is going to make the animation more slow. And then lock in that keyframe so that you have the rotating animation. And don't worry about any of the edges. We're going to scale everything a little bit later so that those edges don't matter. Just focus on getting a nice rotation that you like. Once you've done that, you want to go up to the next layer and just copy and paste those keyframes or copy and paste the values so that it's rotating at the same pace. You can change the values and the pace at which it is rotating if you'd like, but it may make it so your image doesn't match up. So keep that into account. But again, at this point, I'm really just telling you the steps. You can do whatever you want with it. You can rotate it or not rotate it in any which way. I'm just showing you some of the steps I use to accomplish that. At this point, I'm also going to take my foreground person here, the person who's falling through this giant tunnel, and I'm gonna create a little bit of a custom path for him just by, again, utilizing those keyframes, utilizing a bit of Z rotation, and creating some keyframes in the anchor point so that he's falling in the area that I'd like and in the path that I'd like. So now let's go ahead and fix the scaling of everything. So now you can see we have those ugly edges. It looks like a square rotating on top of another square. All you have to do is pop back to the main pre-composition that we set up earlier. You want to select the layer, click S, and just scale it up so that whenever you do rotate, you don't see any of those edges. And now whenever you play that back, if you want to, you can even add a tiny bit of keyframing into the scale on this giant master on this master composition, and you might get some of this stretchy vertigo effects style thing going on whenever you do do that. So it creates a cool effect and some cool depth, and you can really see each of those different layers moving, and it brings a lot more life into it. You can do anything. Um, I went to footagecrate.com and just grabbed some of these free fog clips. I started positioning those fog clips in between each of my layers. The awesome thing about isolating it is again, we can put anything between the layers. If you wanted to, you could put them in 3D space. The fog just adds some more depth so that you can really tell that, this, that things are separated within 3D space. There's fog going behind different parts. There's fog in the foreground, etc. So after all of those simple animating steps, all I really did was add some color correction, some brightness and contrast, a tiny bit of glow on everything just to spice it all up. And we have our final composition. So I hope you guys do like this style. Again, it's really, it's more so teaching you about the work between Photoshop and manipulating those images or even just isolating specific parts and using After Effects as a tool to animate, as a tool to create motion and to create these visualizers or bring things to life in a way that you can't with just Photoshop. So I thought this was a cool example to be able to teach some of those uh, essentials to you guys. If you did enjoy, slap like on the video. Let me know what you want to see next. Like I talked about in the beginning, we got a lot more 3D coming to you. We got a lot more music video breakdowns, effects, and we got all the tools coming to you on www.mediamonopoly.co. Link in the description. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting, and I'll see you guys in the next one.